Welcome to my channel. This is JC Rock and Metal Reviews. My name is John and I have another anniversary album review. It is the 20th anniversary of Lateralis by Tool. But before I begin, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. I do rock and metal reviews, rankings and more. So the album Lateralis was released on May 15th, 2001. It is their third album. So back in January 2001, the band announced that they were going to release a new album, but they gave it a fake name and they called it a Sistema Encephali. And they did this because back in 2001, those uh, file sharing sites like Napster were very big and everybody was like looking for just songs to be leaked on the internet and they wanted to like get them out and people were trading mp3s the band tool was really against that you know even that even why that's why um the band tool hasn't even um allowed their videos to be on streaming sites up up until like maybe like two years ago when they released their most recent album but anyway Basically, they put like a lot of like fake names and they wanted to like flood the system with fake file names just to kind of like a way of like getting back at the uh, file sharing uh, sites. So basically, uh, they did that and they, the sites were basically filled like they expected where the tool songs or fake tool songs with names like River Christ and Encephalitis and things like that. But a month later, they did reveal the name of the album, Lateralis. So the band Tool, um, they did become popular in 1992. They had that song Sober from the album Undertow. Now the music video was very big on MTV. Did have some groundbreaking claymation. You know, at first they were lumped in with the entire like grunge scene. And they had always been considered like an alternative metal band. But this album, La Lateralis, uh, it did incorporate more elements of progressive rock and art rock the songs are very uh, complex they range from uh, 7 to 11 minutes you know they're long they're um, you know use a little, lot of different like time signatures and like tempo changes for example the song lateralis this is based on the fibonacci sequence now i'm not going to try to attempt to explain it but what i do know is that it uses uh, different uh, time signatures to try to like follow that sequence like 9, 8, 8, 8, and 7, 8. Being that the number of 9, 8, 7 is very important in the Fibonacci sequence. And there, there are other songs that uh, do uh, kind of like go together. For example, there is like a trio of songs called Disposition, Reflection, and Triad that kind of go together. And they actually like play those three songs live. So the album cover, it's really cool. It has a very like, tr and the, uh, has a translucent insert that reveals like different layers of the human body. So the art was done by an artist, his name was Alex Gray. There's also a double vinyl picture disc uh, that was released in 2005. Really cool, here's a little picture of it, I'll show it to you if you want to take a look. And the songs, the songs are really great. A lot of long songs, but I'm just going to talk about a few of them because they are very complex. And if I went track by track, this would be like a super long video and I want to keep it fairly short. The album has 13 tracks and a runtime of about 79 minutes. So let me just talk about uh, some of my favorites. So the album opens with a song called The Grudge and it's an eight and a half minute song. Now you immediately hear like the progressive rock elements like with the opening bass line and the drum rhythms. Maynard's vocals sound like go a little more aggressive at first but the song does go through many like tempo changes. There are parts of the song where the drums sound like tribal drum beats. Maynard's vocals uh, do become more melodic as the song goes on. The song has a lot of interesting uh, like drum sounds. There are some distorted guitar riffs and those like riffs, they are heavy. They kind of like add a lot of heaviness to the song. The song is very complex. It changes kind of pace as you listen along. Now when the song hits the five minute mark, it does get a lot slower, very, very atmospheric. And this is the part of the song where it has some really like great riffs. It has these like slow like string bends. They're very distorted and it creates this really like haunting atmosphere. I really like those riffs like in the middle of the song. The main bass riff does come back into the song and there's just like another whole like onslaught of heavy guitar riffs. There are some palm muted riffs towards the end of the song. It really does add a nice touch to it. The next song I want to talk about is called Schism and this is the most popular song on the album. They did a music video for this. It starts out with a signature bass riff and 
The song could probably be compared to a song like Sober. Has some uh, melodic uh, guitar riffs. The song is a lot more like straightforward than the other ones. You know, it was released as a single. The other songs are a lot longer, a lot more complex. But has a really nice uh, bass guitar. A lot of heavy guitar riffs. So I, I like the interplay between the bass and the guitar. There's like an isolated guitar part at the three and a half minute point, and I thought that was really cool. A lot of like futuristic tones and a very like a psychedelic atmosphere. The song does pick up again. Has some heavy guitar riffs, a lot of like technical drum playing. The song does end with some palm muter riffs, and that adds like a lot of like different layer to the song. And I'll talk about one more song in depth, and I think it's a very underrated song called Ticks and Leeches. And this song has some really amazing like drum work in the intro. There's a lot of distortion and feedback, and it just at first it sounds almost like a freestyle jam, but the song kicks in. It's slow, it's dark, it's heavy, it's a little more of the doomier, you know, Tool songs, Maynard's vocals are a lot more aggressive, a little distorted, almost like a cross between like industrial metal and death metal. The song does have a slight like 90s like grunge feel, a lot of like noise and feedback. There's some uh, palm muted riffs in the song, very like thick and chunky. The song does uh, get slow and atmospheric about like four minutes in. A lot of different sounds going on in the background. You know, you hear some vocals, but they are mixed very low. Almost like difficult to hear. You gotta like listen very closely. This is a very good like headphone song. Now at the six minute mark, there are a few seconds of silence. You almost think the song's over, but the heavy guitars come back. Just gets very heavy. It goes through some more changes. A lot of fast drum beats and a lot of guitar feedback. And this is probably one of the more experimental Tool songs on any of the Tool albums, I would say. Really good song, it's underrated. It's one that people don't talk about too much. And I'm gonna bring this video to a close. I don't want it to be too long. Um, this album is probably better for like a diehard Tool fan. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's a really great album. But if you're new to the band, I would recommend starting with an album like Undertow. That one came out in 1992, or Anima from 1996. Those are a little more like accessible, probably a better introduction, but once you start like um, getting into the band, you know, go for this album. It's really awesome. It's complex. You gotta like listen to it a lot. It might take a while to kind of like click with you. You know, you might have to like listen to it, you know, many times and let it grow on you a little bit, but it is. It's very complex and it's the type of album you can listen to over and over. That's why I have some friends who are Tool fans and many of them say that this is their favorite out of the entire discography. So that's it, comment below, let me know what you think of the band Tool, uh, what are your favorite albums, what do you think of Lateralis. Coming up next, more anniversary albums, I'm going to be doing them all week. I have Rainbow, Billy Joel and Paul McCartney. Please check my in video links, some of my recent uh, videos I will put right there. See you in the next one.